Hi everybody, Russ and my Hammers 11, still excited, still happy because we're fourth in the league and just being Tottenham. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon if you made any time new content. As always, like to thank our channel sponsors, Untuck It. Today, we are blessed with another ex-Hammer, as I was saying to David, our eighth goalkeeper. Proportionally, we've had 50, we've had over 50 people, 50 ex-Hammers on the channel and, uh, you know, eight are now uh, our goalkeepers. So it just must be something nice about goalkeepers, wanting to talk about the old times. <laughs> <laughs> how are we david how are we man i'm very good thank you dj russ just call me russ russ well like dj russ. so dj russ dj russ because I'm, I'm a stadium <laughs> i'm a stadium dj at west ham so i've been doing yeah. it for like 20 years so yeah so i'm i'm still there i'm still did there you, like, did you know that i i was the reserve stadium dj at watford were you well put it this way there two 12 10s up in the um <laughs> in the box in the back yeah. of the old stand and i used to go up there in the afternoon and dj brilliant brilliant <laughs> <laughs> i love it 12 I tens it. i couldn't believe it 12 tens at watford football club it was just it was like heaven <laughs> yeah that's crazy although to be fair upton park i still had a like towards even the end we when we, we took to obviously took all the stuff out when we when it finished when upton park closed and i i still found my old tape deck um wow. which was queued up to stop hammer time by mc hammer there we go nice there we go <laughs> nice nice, nice. <laughs> how are we david how are we in this weird world we live in at the moment yeah well i'm okay i'm okay i mean i i can pretty used to spending time on my own obviously i've got people in the house but uh not going out too much is not abnormal um yeah. but at the same time obviously you know not being able to go to to football matches with fans um at every level grassroots and you know the top level premier league watch west ham fourth as you said wow what a result um although i have been to uh, the the london stadium to watch the game against man city um what was that last it was that last year now it's crazy isn't it yeah it would be last, last year now wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so um yeah but uh, li listen i'm uh fortunately i'm healthy i'm i'm good enjoying definitely enjoying what west ham is doing what david moyes and the boys did oh mate <laughs> just it was, it was a little bit of a joke in it at the beginning but then it, all of a sudden it's starting to get serious which is uh which is marvelous yeah it is it's is getting a bit serious now it's, it's, it's the it's the reverse of squeaky bum time now it's like where can we go now it's like dare to dream time it's yeah like, we're not used to it we're not used to it so it's uh yeah long may it continue but as long as we did one over the enemy yesterday that's all everyone's bothered about so that was fine that was all good exactly. but um as you said west ham are doing well as a as a obviously you, you pay for a number of different clubs david you know when you're when all the results come out do you, you know do you look at all the oh how villa done how liverpool done how west Ham done how Always. Portsmouth do, do you Always, yeah um yeah, yeah i i, I kind of because i'm not not overly active on social media and uh, i kind of look at it every now and again i think i want to do but it, 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 <laughs> there's this weird thing it's where you know say so west Ham win i mean yeah. if i'm watching the game quite often i'm covering it for um international tv yeah so i don't mind tweeting something about something i'm doing yeah um but there's other times especially when west ham will play aston villa or, or liverpool or man city then all yeah. of a sudden i'm like I, I can't deal with this one yeah, yeah. and at the moment i've got was it west ham villa uh liverpool man city is it four i'm just trying to think i've missed anyone there have i um i missed anyone I'm not no, thinking. I feel guilty. League, no, yeah, yeah. It's only four. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> it's kind of like four. You know, a couple of um, clashes a season. I'm sort of thinking, just, just got to keep quiet. Not that I don't want either team to win. It's just that I can't really say anything that yeah. would sort of <laughs> be middle right. ground. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, that was right, an David. interesting. Game. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Really, I know really what, what, what side <laughs> your, your bread's buttered, so it's all right. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. Between them, no, 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 no. It, it, well, it, it, Russ, there's a question that's, that's often asked, and it's yeah. like, who's your favorite team? Or yeah. what, what was your favorite club? And I, I, I genuinely had different experiences at every of club, you did, yeah. which, which is a, a, a tribute of fondness to. And West Ham, I mean, strangely, it was the first time I ever got injured. Um, yeah. so my rehab at West Ham was something which changed me i became a different person in a, in a hopefully in a positive way but it was um you know you look at results it's easy to go oh we won something they're better than the others but it didn't work that way and the, the west ham experience was wonderful 
Yeah. And for those, I mean, everyone knows that obviously they, they made, a, I think, 102 appearances across three years at the club, um, mm. which actually, to be honest, it surprised me, actually. <laughs> because I was I was part of a quiz and it was like it was one of the questions that came up and I knew I was interviewing you as well. So I knew exactly how many. So I was like, <laughs> I was already saying, well, how did you know it's 102? No, don't worry. No, no worries. Um, but also, more, you know, interesting enough, obviously, um, Hammer of the Year runner up um in the in the 2001 2002 season um which Who is won it? you know uh Schemmel, sebastian Schemmel won it that year that was a strange year that one that was a weird year that was a weird year <laughs> it was it was sebastian, weird year. what a guy but also i mean considering you know you only really technically played i mean we signed you in the july um, and then you got, actually you got injured on international duty, so you didn't make your debut until November, and and then to then to still end up being you know runner up in Hammer of the Year is quite impressive. Yeah, I remember I the I posted a picture saying that I posted a picture yesterday. The uh, I think it was my debut against Tottenham. Yeah, because we lost one nil, and um, I posted the picture. and I was thinking I don't know if I want to do this one because it's like a, neg a negative result. <laughs> yeah, but it was a positive day for me because it was my uh, obviously the debut, which yeah. I mean, it, uh, listen, um, player of the year, whatever it was, let's uh, say the first first year and a half, I think. Well, was it first year and a half? First year was all right. Yeah, first year was all right. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, the first year is okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about the, 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 the other bit because I think, because everyone will say, if I don't ask about it, but obviously, mm. you know, if we go, went back to the beginning in terms of obviously moving from, from Villa to West Ham, that how did that happen was was you looking to leave or was the offer coming up and no i mean i do you know the funny thing russ i i, I spent over seven years at watford sort of mm. going from schoolboy to the first team even though i only had two years in the first team mm. and uh went up to liverpool um in different start whatever but i was seven years at liverpool and i always felt i was going to be you know like long term at any club i went to yeah. Um, when I signed for Villa, the intention was long term, um, and there was there was a few things going on. I mean, it wasn't wasn't a bad trip at Liver, uh, Aston Villa, not at all. Mm. Um, but then Glenn Roder obviously took over at West Ham. He was interested in me. Uh, I was his first signing, and for a Hertfordshire lad who had spent you know all of his upbringing yeah. in Hertfordshire, to sort of spend yeah. seven years in Liverpool, a couple of years in Birmingham. I, it just felt right. I mean, to come home, yeah. And albeit that was West London, which strangely wasn't it wasn't home, but you know what I mean. So yeah. I come back down down south, and it was again, it was more a family thing because my, you know, my very transient life footballers, a lot of footballers lead. If you're Mark Noble, maybe not so much, but yeah, uh, very transient life. So it, there's an impact on family, friends, and everything. And then as a you know transient nature of it, you end mm. up losing a lot of um sort of relationships as i say so coming back down south made perfect sense and um you know i spoke to glenn and it was like yeah i'm doing this for the right reasons i'm not just bailing out because there's nothing to bail out of at aston villa yeah um i like what glenn was saying i knew glenn from watford so it was yeah, kind of, course, of yeah. reuniting with some old uh old team teammates in that sense and um yeah and then um, I, do you know what i was again it was one of these things where i was really looking forward to that first game. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, I don't even know who the first game of the season was now because I wasn't part of it. Yeah. And um, sort of playing that game, Tottenham. Tottenham was my, my first team as a kid. Yeah. So I was there for a year. So for some reason, Tottenham keeps sort of bouncing in and out of my life. But playing that game for England, you know, literally getting on for a minute and getting stretched off. Yeah. Um, was was tough. Yeah. Didn't get my chance. And obviously, Shaka. Yeah. Jacker started really well for, for West yeah. Ham. It was one of those, <laughs> well, am I going to get my chance here? You know, he just bought me, yeah. am I going to get a chance? But yeah, but it was all for the right reasons. And um, yeah, it was it was the right thing to do. Yeah, I think actually, I think that, that first game was Liverpool away. I think our first game would have oh, been. Was it really? Right. I don't, yeah. I seriously can't remember. So that'd have been quite funny. Um, but yeah, and I, I, yeah, and we've had Shaka on actually, a lovely bloke, and I love Shaka as well. And, um, and obviously, yeah. I mean, what's it? Because like, it must be just a frustration. Because you know, you're ready to get, you know, you're all ready to get started, and then that injury comes. It's like, you know, you sort of you're at a new club, but then you're at a new club in the rehab side, and mm. it's just it must be sort of just like someone's literally just pressed pause on your career because <laughs> like, all ready to get well, going and come back home. Yeah, I mean the, I mean the, the story behind it. Quick, quick version of the story. So obviously, I come on, 
Jimmy Hasford, uh, Jimmy Floyd Hasman goes, goes through one on one. I go, I yeah. dive out. I made the save, and then clattered into Martin Keogh, and or he clattered into me, one or the other. One or the other. And, yeah. and I, I think there was a reference to, oh, you came out so quick, I didn't realise, and I was kind of like, okay, fine, but the, <laughs> I, I couldn't move my leg properly on the pitch, so I got stretched off. Mm. Um, had some physio treatment and asked the question, what do you think it is? And they said, well, that's probably a meniscus. 48 mm. hours. And I'm thinking, right, I can make the first game. No problem. And I went in the following day at training. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I was in the hotel at night. I was scratching the, the top of my leg where it was sore. And my um, my leg was literally moving as I pressed it. It was moving. Oh. I was thinking, it doesn't feel normal, that. It wasn't, no. it wasn't doing it on the other leg. But it, and I was thinking, well, maybe that's a meniscus because I've never had a, a proper yeah. injury. Yeah. And um, John Green, the physio, saw me lying on the physio bed from the door of the porter cabin, as it was, and he went, PCL. And I went, well, how can you tell? And he went, because look at your leg, it was like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, hang on a minute, this isn't 48 hours, is it? No. And then it's, no, this is like three or four months. So, uh, yeah, it was very, very frustrating. And, and again, I mean, I think the, the idea of your best club is the time we did something magnificent. Yeah. But the that rehab process pushed me to completely different boundaries in the sense that I was taking on new skills, mm. um, having to do new exercises. There was different styles in sports science, if you like. The, all the plyometrics were starting to coming in, and I just loved it. Yeah. Um, but then there was a moment, and when you watch these movies, and uh, there's, uh, sports movies, and you watch the guy who's injured, and I always attribute it to like the, a Rocky moment. Yeah. And... Um, we were in the indoor gym and the door was open and it was raining. Absolutely, it was cold, it was wet, it was it was horrible. And I just stood there and I was like, I'd love to be out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and at yeah. that moment, it's kind of like I, that feeling of that yearning to be out there, and I wish I'd never really had. Guaranteed, if I hadn't been injured, I'd have been out there going, Stroke, I want to be indoors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, learned, I learned a lot about myself there. It was good. Yeah. And I mean, as you said, and obviously when you came, you know, you came in, you know, the team, obviously in the summer that we'd done, we'd, we'd, we'd doing all right, we'd doing all right. And then obviously that season, the rest of that season was a good season. We finished seventh, just missed out of Europe as well. Mm. Um, as I said, you hammer the year runner up and stuff like that. And, you know, it was looking good to go into that 0203 season, wasn't it? Really? Mm. We, we had all the, we had all the boys, we had all Joe and that lot, we had all the boys there as well. And it just, didn't happen will it it just didn't that season was just another strange season it's just such a bizarre season that whole time yeah i think uh, i mean I'm, I'm trying to raise a lot from my memory but i think you know <laughs> I, I think it's, it's part of the success was part of the problem yeah in the sense that all of a sudden it became i'm saying i mean it was my first season wasn't it but all of a sudden west ham now became a good team yeah in the sense we finished seventh um it was a uh, some weird things, right, Russ? So I go from Aston Villa, mm. and it, again, it's, it's all um, I say material. But I went from Aston Villa. You know, a lot of the lads um, in Aston Villa were one of these sides who were always competing for not necessarily qualifying, but competing for Europe in one way yeah. or the other, competing for latter stages of tournament uh, cups mm. and stuff. So you go from a, a, a car park with Porsches and sort of high end cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I came down to West Ham and it was like, not the same. And I thought, that's fine. I, in fact, I, I liked it. Yeah. And then after that first season, I remember the lads started buying more expensive cars. And it was kind of, yeah. and it, this, how can I put this? There's, there's a value that I have for football in, uh, I, I don't want to use the term working man game i get what you mean yeah i get what you but mean. there is a value to football it's like well we mm. we're part of a community and the community that we're in is generally a working class community do you know what i mean yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. different from maybe slightly different in bournemouth than it would be in uh, in east london but the point being is you know driving around in a ferrari and i bought ferrari so i'm not bragging it i bought a ferrari when i was at aston villa because my mate said buy one you won't like it and i hated yeah. it i was driving and I, I, was I hate mine, David. I hate mine yeah. too. Well, well, Russ, <laughs> this was the thing. It was kind of I, I, I became a different person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't like it, so I stopped it. So coming to West Ham, I was like, okay, good. The lads are good lads. Yeah. Uh, no one's full of themselves. Um, and then that second season, if I remember rightly, things started to change. Mm. 
there was more money in the game, I suppose, than people could afford it. And it's never about affordability, but it was just kind of like the, the air of the place had slightly changed. Yeah. And when you start getting the label, you're too good to go down. Yeah. You know, we were losing some really bad games. Oh, yeah. I think West Brom at home, 1-0. Sorry, yeah. Oh, no. There was that one as well, 3-2 after being 2-0. Up. Was it 4-3 after being 3-0? I can't remember. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Bolton? Oh, I, can't I can't. Do you know? I'm the same as you. I saw a raise that most of that season. I don't think we. I think we won like. I think we won like three and twenty four something at the beginning. Of the it was just like it was just like one of those seasons where it's like, what is going on? You know, it's just like I think we. I think we lost to Newcastle, and that was why. Like this season, I had the same thing because we lost to Newcastle this season. I was thinking, oh god, here we go. But it was yeah. I think we drew against Arsenal. It was like almost exactly the same fixtures as. as mm -hmm this year and um, the first two then it was like we lost to i think we lost to west brom we lost to charlton we lost to tottenham and it was like it was just and i think then our first i think the first one was chelsea away randomly i think we won um and are you yeah, sure we won i seem to get beat I remember getting beaten five at chelsea that might have been the first season that, that might have been the first season yeah <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure i'll, I'll check the thing is if i'm wrong someone will, will, will there'll be about 50 people commenting afterwards david so i'll just you know if I, i'll I find out afterwards if i'm wrong or not but yeah. i want to say that's the first season anyway yeah anyway, anyway. anyway. Yeah, but we, it was i mean it, as i say it was like a it, oh, it was it was frustrating very yeah. very frustrating and uh i don't think it was a case of lads not trying or wanting i know oh, um, no, if no, i remember no. michael michael carrick was getting a lot of stick from the west ham fans mm. and i think i was writing in uh, the observer at the time and my thing about supporters is they're allowed to say what they want yeah. within within the boundaries of um uh, of correctness you know obviously no racial sure. um sexist whatever none of that but if, if they if they love you they're allowed to say you're the best player in the world if they hate you they're going to say they they hate you if they love whatever and it just and I, I remember writing about it because you know michael was getting a bit of stick rightly or wrongly it doesn't matter mm. and it was like their fans can do it and i think i did something wrong and then i started getting a bit of stick and it was like i've got to accept it if i'm yeah. not playing to the standards that you expect and you're paying to come and see the game then i've got to take that criticism and try and do something about it and uh yeah. i think at the end of the season that was the worst rust, most frustrating thing about that season yeah. was the way that we finished the season off yeah yeah exactly and, yeah and in the end in the end i know we lost the uh, we drew the game against birmingham which was con in, in consequential because uh bolton already won in the end yeah but the game at bolton and that outside of the foot shot by a cotcher that hurt yeah that, hurt. Yeah, that, that was the game yeah yeah it was and you're right oh, i mean just... and <laughs> so it's going I'm, laughing. I'm, I'm laughing about it now no, I, I tell you i was not laughing at the time no i don't think anyone was really no so um but i mean and also i mean that sees you know obviously the, the fact we've you know obviously you you had a personal connection with, with glenn and obviously then glenn was ill and then trevor came in as well um so Sir Trevor, so I do. Uh, sorry, and David James, uh, MBE. Sorry, I do apologize. I well. don't worry about mine. No, 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 he's, no, no, no. he's Sir Trev. He's, he's Sir, Sir Trev. Trev. He's Sir Trev. Yeah, Sir Trev. You're right. And um, again, you know, when when he came in, you know, as you said, the fortune. Some it, it was just uh, why why did why was the impact of Trevor of Sir Trevor coming in? Why did the team just it seemed to just like switch? It was really weird. I don't, I don't, you know, is it a formation thing or was it just? Yeah. Well, they, they, so often you see this happen. The new manager comes in and everything About. changes. Yeah. And, you know, I, as an observer yeah. from, because I'd argue that my sort of early days, I, I didn't have that many managers, but um, yeah. from an observer point of view, it's easy to go, oh, if they can't do it for the old one, why are they doing it for the new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The new manager quite often we'll have either he'll set up a completely different um, playing system. He might change the, the personnel um, or environmentally, he might have a different approach. And mm. there's, a, there's a very, <laughs> I got to, I'll, I'll say the way it is. There's a very, there was a very traditional way in, in training in English football. Yes. Very traditional. That would be train Monday, Tuesday, have a day off Wednesday, train Thursday, and then Friday you would look at the opposition. Traditional, 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 you know? Yeah. So you get in that rhythm. It doesn't matter what you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, whatever. It was only Friday that you started looking at the opposition. It's like yeah, they yeah. play 4-4-2, blah, blah, blah. 
And I remember the the Chelsea game. It must have been, it was a Chelsea game. I'm, I'm not sure if it was actually Trevor's first game. I can't remember to be perfectly honest. I can't Something remember. weird happened, right? The, the strangest yeah. thing. So we're, we're, we're down at Bodymore. Bodymore. I've got my Clarence Blues. Um, <laughs> Sav- Savoy. Yeah, sorry. It's Aston Villa. So we, we're at the training ground. Yeah. Um, Chad Waleef. That's sorry. the one. <laughs> I've got the word B in my, in my head. So, body, uh, yeah. uh, so Chad Waleef. We're at Chad yeah. Waleef. And uh, Monday, and so Trev walks, walks around the pitch and he goes, Jamo, or Jamesy, whatever you call me, he said, uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, I, I can't remember if it was uh, Bakioko or, or Hasselbeck or one of their players. Yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, he said, keep your eye out for him because he likes to shoot from distance. And I'm like, Trev, are you all right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Trev, it's Monday. And I was I was being yeah. ironic or sarcastic because yeah, yeah. it was like Monday and we are preparing for the opposition next sure. weekend. Um, and if I remember right, we've won 1-0. Um, not nice. that the, his scenario actually worked out, but it was just the <laughs> idea that all of a sudden we weren't just training yeah, for the sake I mean, of training yeah. and then dealing with the opposition. Now, there's managers up down the country who say, oh, we always do things, but we don't tell you about it. But this was mm-hmm. a, an explicit um, desire to focus on the opposition from the first opportunity. And, you know, I think he had the uh, a record, what was it, 11 games? So, yeah, he's, I mean, he works mm-hmm. out our, our best manager ever or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, you, if you multiply, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I think 11 games, one defeat, there might have been a couple of draws in there. But it was just, again, you're talking about a manager or or a coach at the time who just created a different environment yeah. where people were literally focused. And it, again, from an outsider's point of view, you go, why wasn't that the case in the first place? But the mm. difficulty is you're going to do what you do. And having been yeah. a manager, yeah. you know, I employed a certain style or uh, create certain environments. And... Mm. Yeah, that's why I'm not a manager anymore. But not not because I was wrong, but my environment was very challenging. So uh, wow. yeah, so Trevor came in, yeah. breath of fresh air, and yeah, so so close, so close, so close. You <laughs> see, I mean, even now, even though that before obviously before we uh, we stuffed Spurs on Sunday, um, two one. Um, we were on forty-two. We were that's a stuff for West Spurs. Anything's a stuffing, isn't it? As long as you win. Um, we've uh, I think we had forty-two points until then, and even then people go, oh, well, you know, better watch out. Like forty-two. Like, what are you worried about now? But we still yeah. had that forty-two points in our head. It's quite, it's quite bizarre. We've had, I mean, we've had we had Trevor on, uh, we have Sinks on, and, and various others as well, and they they said the same thing. It's just, it just couldn't explain it themselves really what happened. But then, unlike a lot of people, obviously we went down that season, and there was all sort of like. You know, like Joe left and, and Trev left and, and and various others left. You didn't. Why didn't you leave, David? Well, it was simple. You know, I signed for the club to play yeah. for the club and all the reasons I said the, that it made it the, the right yeah. move for me. And I felt partly responsible for us going down. And therefore, it was part of my responsibility to try and get us back up again. Um, you know, I, obviously, younger players are going to go. I think Glenn Johnson went off quite quite yep. quickly to uh, to Chelsea. Yeah. So I think Jim, Joe stayed, didn't he? Uh, no, Joe. I think Joe left. What did Joe uh, leave? Joe leave. Jermaine wanted to leave, and they he didn't, and he he stayed at the beginning of the season. So he put his transfer request in. Oh, that's if, right. Yeah, yeah. A day yeah. after, if the rumours meant to be. Yeah, I think it was. I think Trev left. Freddie Canute left. De Canio left. Glenn, Joe, and Les Ferdinand, I think they all left. So that was, you know, is that like, and, and obviously then we were in the championship then. Um, and you know, as I said, you know, you you, you st- I mean, you stayed. Mickey Carrick stayed. Um, yes. So a few a few stayed. Um, but uh, it was just interesting to see why you know because obviously the mindset of some people and you know you had the job. No, I, 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 gen- I, I tell you what, I genuinely it was. I say genuinely, like nothing else is genuine. Um, it was it <laughs> was a case. Mean. It was a case that there was a responsibility. And yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I look at the West Brom game for it. I'm sure that was in that season one nil. I can still remember. I can't remember. It was Kevin. I can't remember who scored, but it was because we, we lost one nil. I remember the uh, the guy from Nottingham Forest um out on the wing scoring from 35 there's loads of goals i remember <laughs> and i i think they, they just keep coming up every now and again i'm like yeah how did i let that in yeah and i must have been in a bad place to let it in 
Yeah. As in performance wise, mentally, you know, there was a lot for me going on off the field at the same sure. time as well. But yeah. it, it, it didn't mean that I shouldn't have been able to do my job. So um, yeah. I say job, I should have been able to perform at the levels that, that were expected of me. And in the end, as I say, you know, right, do I sacrifice another year in the Premier League for a year in the Championship to get promoted? And I was like, actually, it's not a question. I'll do that. Yeah. Um, I think there was a call for Sir Trevor to sort of continue the following season. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, come on, do it, do it. And yeah. he uh, obviously turned that down. And um, yeah. Yeah, because obviously, he, but then he still came back <laughs> after us. Because I think we had, I think in that, I mean, you, you left in, in, in January that season, I believe. Uh, and we, I think in that time, you had, you had three managers. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn came back until the end of August, wasn't it? And then Trevor came in and then, then Pards came in. Um, yeah, Trevor, he could have only been there for a game or two. I know, exactly. but yes, he's yeah. still, he's still, it's one it's for the stats, isn't it? It's still one for the stats, isn't it? Still you a know? Cap, yeah. yeah, he's still a cap. Yeah, it's still a cap, you know, it still counts. Um, and so, yeah, because that must have been again, you know, it's like you, you start all pre season and, and, and Glenn comes back and then he's gone by the end of August and then, and then Pards comes in. I mean, how was, I mean, he, Chalk and cheese, and him and Rhoda, really, in terms of their uh, their personalities. Um, chalk and cheese, chalk, or, cho- you, it, it, or, or chalk and chocolate, as as some oh, as, as some people. I was going to say there, there's some other confectionaries <laughs> which would probably be more suitable. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's I in mean, Poland. You never watch this at the moment. So it's all right. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, I mean, listen, it, Alan did some very good things with West Ham, so it's not about his managerial capabilities. But I think when when I was there, it, it was obvious that he needed something different and yeah. or wanted something different, whether he needed it is another thing, but um, he wanted something different. And, you know, I was old enough and wise enough to realize that it wasn't working. Yeah. I, we, excuse me, not, not that we had a bad relationship, but the, the idea of him possibly not wanting me to be there. Yeah. And then me still being there was kind of like, okay, if that's the yeah. way it is, then fine. And then, um, Kevin Keegan, my old, I want to say my old England manager, he, he brought me back in the squad and never played me. But yeah, uh, yeah, Kevin Keegan called for Man City and it was kind of like, well, you know, and they, I, I, one of the, the most important things about this as well, sorry, there's me talking about the Premier League. I, I was England's number one, theoretically, yeah. the year we got relegated, or the season we got relegated. Um, and it was the, the closed tournament season, was it 2003? Yeah. So going in the championship meant that you know, not playing in Premier League is fine, but exactly. then yeah. I was asking the question, am I going to keep my England number one space? Yeah, yeah. And I thought, again, it doesn't matter. I'm doing this for the right reasons to, sure. to, to help the club, try and help the club go back. Um, and yeah, I played some games for England as a championship, a qualifying games as well as a championship goalkeeper. I was mm. buzzing. Yeah. Seriously buzzing. I was like, yes, you know, you, it, it wasn't, I don't know if it, anyone had paid too much attention to it, but for me, it was like, good. You don't have to be a Premier League player to yeah, be playing for England. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> although a lot of England fans should say, hang on, you should be a Premier League player if you're playing for England. But yeah, yeah. yeah, it was strange times. But yeah, I mean, it, it, was a, yeah, it was a strange time. It was a strange time at West Ham. <laughs> but, I'm, but, but, you know, it's all right. We can look at it now and, and look back and not laugh, but looking back. And, and there, was a new, there was a new stand as well, wasn't there? Yeah, that was the two. Was that the season? That was the that was my first season being the DJ was that new stand right, the Rio yeah. stand because we used to have the little box right down you would you wouldn't necessarily might remember because it was like where you so there was a little police control box literally where you were in the corners um, yeah, yeah. on like a port, port cabin on legs basically and then then the Rio stand what we called it whatever it was at the time Al Pare or no, Dr Martins or it was um, yeah the box then was up by the the scoreboard so like you know I'd so but yeah, yeah so I'm just sorry I'm good, I was just thinking about the season yeah. Because with the, I remember the stand being built, and then there was the <laughs> yeah, right. So you can imagine a a, a well oiled football team, and yeah. any bit of well, I say well oiled, a, a sufficiently oiled football team, and then a bit of disruption, a bit yeah. like changing the training ground. And if I remember rightly, West Ham changing training ground also coincided with a bit of uh, um, not so good form. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened, and. The, the, the stand was changed and they introduced the um, executive boxes stroke hotel. Yes, they did. Yes. Yes. The so quality, we would, quality hotel. It was called. That's it. And we, I think there was one or two times we stayed 
at the hotel at the ground before games and it was kind of like really yeah it was weird. <laughs> yeah yeah because they had because they had because i remember because we used to do like you know whatever uh, those sh- uh, weddings or whatever you'd stay there the night if you was djing and um and they'd have their sort of the, the halogen lights like on the pitch but it's all bled through to the the, the curtains <laughs> so you sort of wake up and it's like an alien had just landed on the on the pitch you open the windows oh, there's these massive halogens like blaring at you should be yeah. invested in blackout blinds but there exactly you go. strange times <laughs> strange times at upton park but yeah as you said it's um we live and learn, don't we? We live and learn, and uh, and what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, doesn't it, David? So that's all good. That's all good, right? Um, I want to talk about your Hammers Eleven. So what? So basically, everyone we've had on the on the channel, um, apart from Harry Redknapp, randomly, um, because he started talking about Bobby Ferguson in the sixties and ran out of time, obviously. Um, talking about anything else, um, has given their eleven. So that, so for the fans, we get an eleven from the players they they were, they've been alive to see play, but from the players, we put together an eleven of the players that they were they played with during their time at West Ham. Now you had, you know, to be fair, the I'd say modern day golden era of West Ham, really, particularly from a, an England perspective with, with Joe Cole and, and people like that and Trevor's and so it'd be interesting to see. We'll play a four four two as well. I know you I know you know you, you know you used to be a manager and stuff, but we'll do four four two because that's I can all I can do on graphics. Just a number. Just just, 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 just a number. some numbers, so I say. That's literally what it is. So we'll start off in goal. Now you can pick yourself no problem at all if you want to pick yourself i mean to be honest to be fair david you were probably i mean you played every game in the 0203 season didn't you you played you, i mean you played 100 100 appearances in yeah I don't, i'm so. trying to think if i actually uh, bar the injury if i missed a game i don't i don't think you probably i don't think you did i don't think you did until jan obviously until, until you know, yeah I'm, I'm sorry I'm, <laughs> yes 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 Right, so Brad Friedel's, uh, forgive me, I, I love, I used to love breaking records for right yeah. record. And Brad Friedel had the consecutive Premier League record. He took it off Frank, off me, or, who took it off Frank, I can't remember. It was one, I was in there somewhere. You were, I was yeah. thinking, hang on a minute, I played all the games for West Ham, including the Championship, yeah. then went to Man City, played all the games for Man City, and then played X amount of games for Portsmouth. Well, that's wow. like five years without missing a game. How comes it doesn't count? So I was, uh, yeah. Anyway, these records, they're, they're, I tell you what, they're tailor made. Don't know why. Uh, so, <laughs> so, the tailor made, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, right, statistics. Well, you can prove anything with statistics. It, I, I work in market research, so I know you can. <laughs> okay, right, I'll take that. Um, right. In goal. I love. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, I would put myself because I played most of the games while I was there, which would make sense. But I could also put Shaka because Shaka was top bloke. He was a top bloke. He was, a top and he, bloke, and the, before I got in there, he was playing well, if I remember rightly. So yeah, he was. And and to be honest, and to be honest, like we've had Shaka, we've we've spoken to him about. I spoke to him obviously about Glenn bringing you in. And um, he was really honest about it. And he, I mean, Chuck, you know, he's just, he's, he's a very honest man. And he's like, I'd already checked out when I saw that David was signed. Cause I thought, well, that's me not, not being number one. So I was ready to leave. And then obviously David got injured and then Glenn said, Oh no, come back. We want you. And I was like, to be honest, I think I, not, I didn't give a shit, but he was like, I'd already phys- mentally checked out of leaving the club. So and you get, so I can totally understand that. Cause it was like, you know, I think he you told me that in. as well. Oh, fair play. <laughs> so, 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 right. <laughs> Do you know what? I was going to leave at you stage. Yeah. All right, yeah. so you're going to put Shaka in? Or you? It doesn't matter. Do you no, 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 no. I'll put, I'll put, do you know what? I'll put, I'll put Shaka in because if, you, if you, it was a moment in time, there was some games for West Ham where I was better than Shaka without question. Yep. There was games that I wasn't good enough to be on the bench. So um, I think... That's very honest. <laughs> yeah, that's very honest. Uh, my, as I said, you're, there's a few people who... Um, my, my granddad got a soul pastor a long time ago. But there's a few people, and you're one of them. He was always like, David James, only bloody keep we've had for years. And I was like, oh, do you know what? When I, when I knew you were coming on, I was like, oh, my granddad would be happy. And, and oh, you're right. There was some, but even when you had a shit game, I know this, even when you said... He, it's like, oh, Bloody good keeper he is. Bloody oh, good keeper. That's yeah. wonderful. Nice. Him and, tre- him and Trevor, you and Trevor Sinclair. Trevor Sinclair was the only one. He's. I don't know how he got to the games, actually, because he was like, you know, I swear he was actually blind, um, thinking about my granddad. And basically anything that was done on the pitch by any person in the West Ham kit who was black was Trevor Sinclair. 
Okay. His eyesight was going. So Defoe scored. Sinclair, only bloody player. <laughs> you might have done a save, Shaq. I might have done a save. Only bloody player, Sarah Sinclair. But no, he was, he was a he was always a big fan of yours. Right, we'll put Shaq in. Let's put Shaq in stopping goal. Right. Yeah. Back four. Back four. Let's go um left back. Yeah, left back. Right, you're gonna have to give me some names now because I'm go- gonna have to look up some names. I'm gonna have to look up yeah, some names. Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, this this goes other... back to my this goes back to my transient lifestyle. It's kind of like, thanks guys, yeah, love you lots, bye, yeah, and yeah. then anyway, kind of... anyway, let me get, how do we get to the? Hang on, did I play with you? Yeah, did, did we play together? Um, and yeah, I had the same thing with um, I was uh, I interviewed Nobby Solano the other day, and he kept on calling Ma- Matthew Effrington Matthew Hutchinson, and I was like, oh, wow. do you mean Don Hutchinson or Matthew Effrington? <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> like, okay, we didn't play with Don Hutchinson, I don't think so. But Matthew, right? Okay, and let's have a look. Let's get some teams up. Let's get some squads up. Right, I'm thinking... right okay. Oh one, oh two. Let's have a look. Who do we have? We had uh, left back Nigel Winterburn, Scott Minto. We had to who else we got? Uh Nige again in the in the previous in the next season. Rufus Brevet. I think I'm gonna go for a oh, Rufus Brevet. Yeah, that was the deflection against Birmingham that made it, it was, too yeah. it's, <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. Not not I'm not annoying at him, but it was so annoying because it was it was like that far away from my finger. Yeah. 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 It would have been even worse if I'd have tipped it and it's still gone it. But um <laughs> Love it. Scotty Minto. Scott Minto. Yeah. There you type. I've got to type him in. Sorry, Scott. I've got to type you in because no one's picked you before. Scott Minto. There he is. There he is. Scott yeah. Minto. And yeah, I mean, so the 11 is, because there's always an, it's, it's a common question who the best players you played with. And it's kind of like, it's yeah, not, okay. It's not, it's not necessarily yeah. the best. It's the people you it, enjoy playing with. Yeah. Exactly. Like, Scotty was, Scotty was great. Yeah. Nice, nice guy, Scott Minto is. I think he was always big. some, t- did he always go on some bed? Sure, he went on Sunday. He was, uh, if not, he definitely does at the moment. He's, he's still. I think he shaved himself as well. He shaved his, his chest, and so he looks a little bit more chiselled. Oh, I should really try that. Maybe it might work for me. Here we go. Uh, right, let's go. <laughs> Nothing will work with that. Okay, uh, okay. Put Minto in. Let's go. Let's go right back. So right back, we'd have had uh, Glenn. Oh, actually, Glenn Johnson. That's an easy one. I would have said, yeah. yeah. Or, or Sebastian Schemmel, you know. But well, no, well, here we go. Actually, it's a great, great, great shout because I'm trying to think how many games Glenn Johnson actually played. When he I didn't play there. a lot. He didn't play a lot. He was one of those guys. He, I think yeah, he played. I think Glenn he probably, probably played less than 20 games for us in the club. Uh, I'll, I'll, right, I'll go for Sebastian Schemmel. Oh, oh, there we go. Because oh. Glenn Johnson was my right back at Portsmouth. He was. But then did, but did, but did Schemmel. Because he went to Portsmouth as well. Was he? Was he? Was you still at Portsmouth no. when Sebastian? No, no. no but I remember Sebastian at West Ham. Yeah, being a wonderful person, which is important. Yeah, and obviously a, a great defender. Yeah, so great. He won Player of the Year. He did. He did. He won a runner up. I can't remember who was runner up that, that season, but it's someone. It was someone who's good. Um, yeah, he 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 owns a a West Ham themed restaurant in Luxembourg. There we what? go. Yeah, it's called Upton Park. It's in Luxembourg. Okay. There we go. So, you know, European tour. Yeah. A good Luxembourg team. I don't know. Um, right, anyway, so we'll put, we'll put, Seb, we'll put Seb in. Okay. Um, he was in mine anyway, so that's all right. He was in my 11. Right, okay. Uh, Centre-offs. Centre-offs. Very, very important position, obviously, uh, with, with, with the goalkeeper. Um, who do we have? Who do we have? We had... Uh, that's what think now. Um, let's think. Ian Pierce. Oh, I love Ian Pierce. Ian Pierce. Pierce. Yeah, top, top Pierce. guy. Yeah, is in yeah, he was in my team. Um, yeah, I liked him. I, 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 really good on the rowing machine. Was he really, really good? Yeah, I think he was, I, he was near. I, I want to say Olympic standard, but anything better than good is like Olympic standard because yeah, he was he was good. Good rehab. I, uh, was it? Yeah, because obviously he was injured as well, wasn't he, for a while? Um, I love a good defender who can play up front, and he played up front. I think the Tottenham and a couple of games he played up front for us. A bit like Chris Sutton, he'd always play in defence sometimes, wouldn't he? As well, uh, it's always good for the older uh, Championship manager, you know, having a play. With the yeah, he scored against me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't uh, know if he's playing up front, or yeah, he scored when he was at Fulham. 
Yeah, so, he did, yeah, yeah. He went to Ful- He went the same time as you when you went to yeah. when you went to Man City. He went to Fulham at the same time, wasn't it? I liked him, Pierce. Um, right, the other the other centre half. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look who you would have played with. Let's have a quick gander. Um, I can think of a couple of names, but go on, not him. the ones go on, you get. No, 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 no. You, you tell oh, me who I've got to choose from. <laughs> no, you pick who you want, man. You pick who you want. No, no, got, I'm trying to think because it's like Pierce. He doesn't. He didn't spring straight to mind. I'm. Uh, Maybe I should have done some homework on this. Well, in, in the no. meantime, while I'm doing some homework, you can all look at this. Yeah, he's having a look. There we go. Do, 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 do. That's nice. Look at that. Oh, that's very good. The West Ham action, man. This is fantastic. It's got the West Ham kit on. I know. That's cool. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, who's your play? Trying to deflect it. Yeah, it's, it's deflecting, yeah. <laughs> Stalling! Um, right, so... Um, let's so see, I think uh, Foxy, Gary Breen... Um, Repka, are they played Tom, right Thomas Re- Thomas Repka. I, I have to say him. You have to, otherwise we'll come and get you. You know, I'm not being. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he was Ludo McClosco's best mate. Yep. He well, do you know what he would have given if he didn't actually do it anything for that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. He's a very he was a very scary person. I, I'm I'm trying to get him on as well, and and um he's uh even when he texts me, he, he, I get I get intimidated by a text message because even like if he might put the crossed hammers at the end, and you think even that's going to be like you know oh god Thomas, yeah. But no yeah top guy. We had um who did we have? Oh, combo who he interviewed. It was an ex player, and they said um the only time they saw him generally. Um, lose it was when we used to have the guys to come clean the cars at Chadwell Heath mm-hmm. and one backed his car into the back of the training facility and um he had to be somewhat restrained um <laughs> otherwise the yeah. poor the poor the poor car, car car cleaner would have been absolutely uh well I don't know what would that be happened to be honest. Um right okay uh, Thomas Thomas what That's going? nice Thomas Repka, lovely bloke. Right, okay. Um, yeah, he's, out, he's out of prison now. Um, right. <laughs> Living in Luxembourg? No, he's not in Luxembourg. <laughs> no, he's in prison. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think I think Thomas's career, his West Ham sort of notoriety, even heightened when he'd left because when he retired, he then was all the, I mean, obviously he went to prison. He had problems with, you know, he, he, he bought hired cars and sold them as his own and stuff like that yeah brilliant absolutely crazy man um right okay let's go into midfield right okay right midfield right midfield let's think let's think right let's help you out because i'm case... gonna say sinks it's got to be yeah it's got to be, be trev isn't it? it's got to be trev love love trevor sinclair yeah love it. and he must be for good for goalkeeper when you got you know thinking distribution wise you know like someone like sinclair you know yeah no he uh i mean it was 2002 so it's just before winning the world cup i just remember him in um, in the world cup in japan and it was just like he buzzed off that moment obviously for the right reasons but it was just like yeah and then obviously west ham um man city because i followed him up to man city didn't yeah. i and and also slight slightly biased but um his son and my sons were mates so ah oh, see well, but it's not for that reason i picked him <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he's a top player. top guy, top guy. Um, yeah, we've had him. Uh, yeah, he's a nice, nice man as well. Um, yeah, Trevor Sinclair, and and you know, I think uh, you know he's obviously he does a lot on Talksport now. I think he mm-hmm. comes across there's a certain player like he's like Joe Cole and, and and yourself. I've heard you on on the international stuff, and I've been watching probably not legal legal streams and stuff of games. And um, I just think there's something you know certain guys who've just got it in terms of the commentary analyst role and um like yourselves and, and joe particularly as well i think they're very good and trev big fan of trev's obviously um i'll have to say that and they, and, they, and they will like this because I, i'll say that you picked him and he'll retweet it so that's great you know the old <laughs> social media engagement engagement. Oh, there, there's no social media bias in my selection i can assure you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. I'm going to have to think. I'm going to have to put Thomas Repka on there. See? Right, okay. So put six. Let's go. Um, let's go left wing. So left wing. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Who can we have I on think left wing? wing? So, now, so we've got difficulties here. Um, oh, yeah. Hmm. Mm. I'm, I'm flicking through my my head here. Left wing. Left wing. I'm trying to think. Depends. Um, 
I'm looking and I'm thinking, who are you going to play? But it's like... Go on, hit me with some names. Because I'm, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I'm thinking he's a Ford. He's right, OK, so let's think. You would, Well, I mean, you know, I mean, people have put, I mean, people have put Joe on the left, um, you know, just to get him in the team. Um, they've wow. put, who else? I'm just looking here now. Who are we going to have? Oh, God, I forgot some. You play some great players. Rigobert, Song, all of them. Um, right, I think, I think, I think. Um, right, so he put... What's something uh, in my team? He 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 played in a two. He was in the in the o one o two squad. Says here, I don't remember. He played six games. Because he, I don't remember him. Oh yeah, he, well he must have gone in the in the window then. Yeah, he must have gone in. Because I was, um, I remember him from Liverpool. Yeah. 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 He okay. Have um. Yeah, because we yeah, loads left, didn't they? So like, piercing that. Um. So you'd have had yeah, Joe. You could put Joe on the left. Um. In o three o four, you'd have had Matty Effrington. Um, there was loads in the 0304 because we bought loads of sort of those type like Joby Mack and up and people like that. But, um, yeah, well, I'm just trying to think who who I was playing with. I'm gonna go for Joe, yeah, because yeah. he was more flexible in yeah. roles, not because I'm trying to squeeze him in. I know what you mean, but he was more flexible. That yeah. sounds exactly the same as trying to squeeze him in, doesn't it? <laughs> He was flexible. He can play in a multitude of positions. But I'm not trying to squeeze him in. But yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Flexible. I know what you mean. Yeah. Because you could put him there and and I mean he played there for yeah. Chelsea in England, didn't he? On the left. Of course. Famously. So there we go. So it's, yeah. And I mean, you know, him him training, um, you know, what was he like as a as a player to to be part of that? Because he was, you know, obviously we we loved him. He was an incredibly gifted footballer, but obviously you were training with him every day, you know. Um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, the talent. I mean, the, the one one frustration is he was so talented. Yeah, I think. And the, when I say frustration is when you got someone so talented, like the year we went down. Yeah, you're just thinking, why aren't that? And it wasn't a blame on Joe. Don't get me wrong. It's kind of like when we got that talent, why isn't that talent winning us games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. You know, I think in Joe's situation, there was a lot of responsibility put on him. It was because he was so talented. Yeah, you know, even likes of. Um, Jermaine Defoe was still young and upcoming, even though Joe was <laughs> Joe, Joe was like already proven youngster. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But the likes of Jermaine Defoe and uh, even you know again Glenn Johnson were only going to play a f few games because they were young and not well established. Whereas Joe was the was he sixteen years old when he hit the scene? I think Something sixteen. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, some we, we knew thing. about him when he was he was twelve, thirteen. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that yeah. that responsibility on Joe. Mm. Um, but he in training, yeah. I mean, you just you'd see the skills, you'd see all this stuff. He, he, he gobby as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. That always helps. Uh, get, in, mean, in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I think mean, you had some. You had some characters. I think it's fair to say. Um, I think you. You know, if you, it's it's holding your own, isn't it? More than anything, and he could do it with his feet, but obviously, by the sounds of it, he could do it with his mouth as well, which yeah. helps. Which helps. Yeah. I think. And I'm playing this just just a. Silly anecdote. I played in his charity five aside in December oh, when lockdown was. Res uh, oh, lockdown I saw was, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, down I the, managed um, to break the my hand, <laughs> saving a shot. Didn't go in. What is it about you, a West Ham players, and getting injured, David? Oh, yeah, I know. Well, we, we were called. Uh, we were just, uh, here's the irony of it. So it's Joe Cole's uh, Eleven Foundation. Yeah, we were called Team England. Yeah. And the physio was the same physio I had at England. And I said, every time I play for England, I get injured. Uh, or the only times I've been injured are, is playing for England. So uh, I broke the first time I broke a, any bone was in Joe Cole's five-a-side charity. So, I love it. I love it. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's – and, yeah, I mean, he was just, yeah, brilliant money. And he said, I, I, um, he'll be on soon, and I'd like to talk to him about that as well. Because he said, we know – I mean, yeah, from the age of 12, everyone was, like, buzzing about him. So a lot of pressure. And obviously that season went down. He was captain as well. So he must have taken mm. it really – because obviously, you know, he's West Ham through and through type thing. So, um, right, okay, so we put Sinks on the on the right, Joe on the left. Right, in the middle, we have two in the middle. Now, you've got – you've got quite a you know, Michael quite a people. I was going to say, I think you didn't put Michael Carrick in after you said about him. But, yeah, Mickey Carrick. What a great, what a great player! What a great player! Yeah, one of those players. And I think one of those players who 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 is always um, he's it's one of those players. Who I think you know when when he leaves, he's like the last piece of the puzzle you didn't realize you needed because um, you haven't been able to replace. So West Ham never replaced him really. Um, Spurs never replaced him. Man United never replaced him. But he wasn't 
in the headlines every week. Do you know what I mean? He was just. I there. think. I, I think that's the thing. He was unassuming. Yes, good word. You know, it's a it's a player who you just okay, and it was effort. I mean, I don't, I don't want to use a swan analogy, but there was this kind of effortless glide to his running. Yes, he, he was. I'm not going to even say pretty because it sounds disrespectful, but he was a very nice to watch footballer, mm. and sometimes that is just on his own. Yeah, Mickey Carroll, yeah, he done all right, kind of thing. He's a guy that yeah. probably, like you said, get, get or six or seven out of ten every week in the paper, yeah. even though he's probably done something fantastic. And I know, yeah. you know, he, he scored against me once. I think it was must have been when I was at Villa in the top corner, and it was just like, how annoying! Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not supposed to hit them shots against me, type thing. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and it, again, what a great guy. I mean, yeah. Not that I haven't said that about Joe, and I, or I should have said that about Joe and, and Trevor as well, because he, he was just a really good guy around the place. It was a there's a bit of humour there. He wasn't he wasn't as loud as Joe was necessarily, or Trevor thinking about it. Oh yeah, Trevor. Um, yeah. But he was a very talented player, and not, you know, signs for Man United and wins a couple of things. So um, kind of <laughs> kind of proves the argument. As it's it? usually the way with West Ham, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, Joe won a few as well, didn't he? Um, yeah. Right, okay, so put Mickey Carrick. And who's, who's he going to partner in the centre then? I think this is a good one. Oh, this is a good one. There's some good, I mean, you know, I'm looking, it's like, oh, he was good. He I don't want good. to get drawn into that one. Um... <laughs> I'd love to know who you were drawn into there. I'm trying to think. Right, let's think. Let's, let's try and help you out. Right, okay. Stevie Lomas. Monks, Johnny Monks, Don Hutchinson, uh, Laurent Courtois. <laughs> played Laurent games. Courtois. Yeah, Laurent Courtois. Um, Lee Bowyer played there, obviously, yeah, towards the end. Do you know what? I am. Um, I think I'm going to go for Don. Deadly Don. <laughs> Reason being, he was my teammate, obviously at Liverpool, and yeah. we didn't we we got on, but yeah. it wasn't it wasn't the most ro romantic relationship. Um, and then coming down to West Ham and Don being there, he was a different person in a positive yeah. way, yeah, in, yeah. in a more positive. Uh, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think he's one of those, and he's he's one of those players. We we have quite a few of them who are I call them boomerang players. Joe's one as well, you know, goes away, comes back. Shaq is one as well, goes away, comes back. Um, <laughs> but they all do. They all do. Or they come back and they be a manager or they come back and be a coach or, you know, it happens quite often with, with West Ham, it seems. We have players who leave and come back. And um, But, yeah, it's all good. Right, okay. I'm so just, we've got... I'm, just rem I'm just remembering him chesting one back and I can't remember who it was against. Was it? Was it? I don't know if it was Birmingham. It would have been Birmingham. Would it have been Birmingham? Black it would have been Birmingham. Birmingham. It was a horrible one. It was like the ball, you know, like a corner or something. The cross gone in, he chested it. And as I'm going for it, the forward ran past because he chested it short. Yeah. And the forward toe pokes, it goes through my legs. And it was another one of those games where we ended up like, how do we not win that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just <sighs> give him whole, for that. Yeah, yeah, I'll give him for that. Fair, forgive him. <laughs> Good old Don. Uh, but see, I mean, obviously, with, with some for, with forwards, they, they, remember, they remember goals they've scored. Um, some a lot more than others. From a goalkeeper's perspective, do you remember saves like top draw saves, or you know, oh, I remember that game I played and did that, and um, it's more goals. Yeah, more goals you conceded. Yeah, yeah, and even the good ones should have been saved. It's really frustrating. Gotcha. The saves should have been saved because that's what I do or yeah. did. The goals are something I shouldn't have done, so therefore it was always like, why didn't I? You know, even I, again going back to that Birmingham game <clears throat> uh, of of Rufus, the the deflection. It's kind of like yeah. it, it, there's a bit about the fact that we didn't win. Yeah, but it's just the goal. And if we had won three one, there would have been a goal in there. So conceded. It's kind of like should have been three nil. If I'd have could have, and you know, it took me a little while to get over that. Actually, yeah. act, destroying myself in a way sure. um, straight after the event. But um, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense being sort of over analytical about, about your performance and not sort of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, tell you, I could tell you get that with you, man. I'll tell you, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, up front, first first forward striker, whatever you want to call him. Jermaine. Jermaine Defoe. Jermaine Defoe. Natural, natural goal scorer, wasn't he? Scary. In training, you would have seen that more than anyone, to be honest. Scary. Just, just so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so annoying because he's little, 
Yeah. And he hits the ball as hard as just about any player I've played against. And he's got these little feet. So he, 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 the thing with him is he knew that he was going on target. I would argue he didn't know exactly where. Yeah. In a point that, you know, there's that little bit of movement and wobble. So he'd score and he'd be like, you don't even know what you're doing. And he just yeah. used to wind me up all the time. And he's gobby as well, in a, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd always be on your toes, either in the in the physical acts or the verbal acts. It was kind of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got and, Jermaine and Defoe that. one side and Joe Cole the other side. It's just oh, kind of like, come on. And Steve Lomas popping his head in every two minutes. Oh, Lomi in the middle, yeah. <laughs> just just dig, just little digs in the middle. Yeah. I think I think that, that's why I think someone like Antonio is doing well for us at the moment, because I don't, I don't think he necessarily knows what he's doing next. So he's sort of a reactive player, and I think the defenders don't know what to do, and he just bundles them over. You know, he's just I think the least. Yeah, Mikel. I mean, I, um, he's got so many attributes. Yeah, uh, as, as Jermaine did, but obviously slightly different. Yeah, of course, totally, yeah, totally different. Um, yeah, Jermaine knew what he's doing. He knew he was scoring goals. The point yeah. was, you would get someone like a, dare I argue, Ronaldo would go. I'm going to hit this in the top right hand corner. Yeah, and it goes top right. Jermaine would go. I'm going to hit it towards that direction there, and it will go in. Yeah. If it's top yeah. right or middle or, or, or slightly to the left, yeah, it would right. still go in. And that was the thing about it. He would score. Um, oh, phenomenal! And then obviously yeah. at Portsmouth, I, I got to be his teammate alongside England, and yeah, yeah, brilliant. Right, okay, so Def- Defoe, and there's one more spot. Freddie Canute. Freddie Canute. See that? See, he doesn't come up very often, and I think that's a travesty because I think he was brilliant for us. I love. Yeah, uh, but he had. I mean, he had. I suppose statistically, you you would argue that he wouldn't be the man. Yeah. Um, but Freddie Canute, he was the most gentle, gentle guy I think in our change room. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you, could, you can imagine, you've got Thomas Redker and you've got Freddie Canute. <laughs> I mean, they were polar opposites in in just about every description i mean if they weren't wearing the same kits you'd think the kits would be a different color yeah, um, yeah. or the opposite color but no um because freddie's another one he 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 was unassuming i think again when you look at michael mm-hmm. carrick freddie canoe was the striker version of michael carrick yes yeah he had a long gait which meant he didn't look like he was sprinting but he was covering a lot of distance mm. he could smash the ball um almost apologetically yeah. And just around the change room, I, I found him such a wonderful bloke. So yeah. I'd, I'd put him in my 11 because he's, again, he, he, when he can play, I mean, where he go? Villa, Valencia, was it Valencia or? Uh, Seville. 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 Seville, yeah. Yeah. He went there um, and did, did the business over there as well. And obviously we went, yeah. went to Tottenham as well. But apart from that, we just forget about that. Well, so I remember they were the dark days. They were the dark days. Right? for this team as well. By <laughs> looks at it, to be fair. But yeah, let me just bring it up so you can see. Right, this is uh, this is this is your team then, and and David. So yeah, I think I think it's it will definitely do it. Definitely do bits, as the kids say. I I reckon there's a few of the fans who are going. That is a relegation side if ever I've seen one. But I don't think so. I think I think it's in their pomp. I think yeah, uh, at, yeah. At their best. And their best exactly. People. And we've and got yeah. Maybe can I just take a photo of this? Yeah, gonna, well, I'll send, gonna, I'll send, I'll send, I'll send you, you'll you get the link in anyway, but you send, you take a <laughs> screenshot then, go on then. No, I'm going to send you on the group chat so Dom sees it. Oh, good, yeah, and yeah, and I, I'm, yeah, and I, we'll talk afterwards, I want to, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, we'll do that, um, let me just bring you back in, Jamie, man, it's been, uh, it's been brilliant, it's been great chatting to you, I've really thoroughly enjoyed it, I only said I'd take 45 minutes of time, and I've been in almost an hour, but thank you, it's been brilliant, Not it's at been all. really, really fun. And obviously, it's wonderful, uh, to, wonderful to relive some of the memories. Yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. We don't. Yeah. Uh, there's loads of people who do what's happening today, but that's what we do. We do the memory stuff. And uh, so, right. So get, while we're doing the rerun, rerun, just to just to add a bit. So there's two. Is it two stories? There's one story. One story. <laughs> well, there's, there's one question actually. Uh, uh, any West Ham fan out there? So when I was at Watford, we played West Ham. Upton Park lost one nil, and for the I'm thinking it was early in the season because I know we lost one nil away or West Ham away at Watford. Alan Devonshire half volley from outside the box, top right hand corner. Yeah, Ludo just kicked a boomer and it, and he just ran onto it half volley anyway. Um, <laughs> so the game at Upton Park, Julian Dick's penalty with about five or ten minutes to go. I have said to my West Ham friends, 
and the one in particular who says, yeah, it was down um, down. I'm trying to think what the name of the stands were. The left hand, not the Bobby Moore, the other one. So it would have been. Well, it's uh, the old, old state, old Upton Park. I want to say old before yeah. any of the. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if Bobby Moore, so you would have had that would have been the the North Bank would have been the opposite the side, Bank. the Centenary Stand. It became known as. Okay. I'd, Whichever, which I think it was a Bobby Moore. I I said we come out, and it's on the right. So, so going back out, to 19, 1990. Tunnel, <laughs> yes, if you come out of the tunnel and you go and and you go right, that would be the where the, yeah it would have been the Bobby Moore Stand, the South South Bank. South Bank. So it would have been the South Bank in 1990. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think it was in the South Bank. And this guy is adamant that it was the other side. Yeah. And I said I went left. And he said, no, Dixie done you with your eyes and went right. So we again, it's like Freddie Canuti and Michael it, Carrick. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's one guy who watches all the shows who's sort of synonymous amongst West Ham YouTubers called Kent Hammers. And he'll love it because I name checked him. He'll know exactly and he'll have it. And once I find it, I'll let you know. Because he'll say exactly if you what could. it was. Yeah, don't worry, we'll do that. We'll do that. So, Kent, there's your job, man. There's, just, there's just, just, for the, just for the story, I was like that. Uh, because I, I grew up sort of support. I wouldn't say I, I'm a Luton Town supporter yeah. uh, when I was a kid, but I used to go and watch any pretty much everyone play. Not that I went to West Ham to play, uh, to watch a game when I was a kid. Uh, I've been to other London grounds nearer the north side of London. But sure. anyway, and I always thought, and I was standing in the goal for this penalty, and it's like, if I say this, I'm going to be in trouble with all these fans. <laughs> it was like 20 year old kid. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I didn't try and save it. I did, but yeah. Dixie smashed it as he normally did. So uh, if you can clear that one up, I would be very we grateful. Will we will do, Davis. That's your mission, Kent. Let us and know. The, Let and us the know. other story. So the other, <laughs> the other story was West Ham Ipswich Championship when we got relegated. Yeah, Ipswich. Yeah, it, must, it was one of the early games from him, right? It seems to be a. I seem to remember a sunny day, and um, th there was a goal kick. So th <laughs> there was a goal kick. Ball's gone out for play. So I've gone around to pick the ball up, and this fan was holding on to it. Yeah, Ipswich fan, of course. <laughs> it was a West Ham fan, so <laughs> Ipswich fan's holding hold on to it, and uh, he's gone. <laughs> and he, he was calling me rubbish, this, that, and the other. Yeah. and um, I said something back to him. And then we carried on the game, and it was just <laughs> just getting his stick all the way through the game. And at the, I think, if I remember rightly, we won. It switched away. We won, I believe, it was two one two or one. something like that. Yeah, two one. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember turning around to the fan, <laughs> and then thumbing up to him, and he went, "Yeah, thumbs up." And it was just like one of these experiences in football. You get, I mean, I've had it in, in different times, few of these experiences, but this yeah. is one where it's like that was nice. So yeah. again, you know, West Ham gives me some wonderful moments. And that's the thing. I oh no, I forgot the Leeds one as well. What's the <laughs> Leeds one? What's the Leeds one? Was it? No, was. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh dear, hang on. Yeah, it was. No. <laughs> was that Le That was West Ham. Sorry, I've got. No, nah, that's all right. I had blonde afro. You had the blonde. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you had the blonde stuff at, at West Ham. Yeah, because no, so we, um, <laughs> yeah, am I keeping it? Sorry about this. No, so keep the, it going. Uh, we love it. We keep it going. Yeah, you had the, you had the blonde, blonde afro. You, you had blonde afro. It was a proper you had, afro. You had, mm, yeah, kind, no, not really. Orange not, not, colour. Yeah, you had the orange and you had the blonde and you had it as, as sort of dreads as well. Yeah, it was West Ham, yeah. So we're, yeah. we're playing at Leeds. Why? Yeah. That's right, yeah. We're playing at Leeds. I've got this blonde afro. And um, I, I tell Leeds fans this because I just love the story. So we, we, I think we were winning. And uh, we were about five, ten minutes to go. All I could hear is this murmur of, there's only one. Then all of a sudden, there was a moment of clarity. And uh, they go, there's only one David Gower. And I, met, I turned around because of my blonde. And then they all started doing all this. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. But then there was the... So I'm doing all my, my anecdotes now. There was a, if you remember when we played Man United, so you beat Man United, I say you because I wasn't in the team then, but West Ham had beaten Man United in the Cup the year before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Paolo, I think. Yeah, yeah. Right. The bar was it Paolo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so I just got back inside and <laughs> we going up to Old Trafford. Given my first two games, we lost one nil from him, Riley. Yeah. And then... Um, I thought, you know what, change of change of fortune, whatever, I'm going to bleach my hair blonde. So I, I bleached my hair 
and I did my eyebrows as well. Yeah. And they went orange. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that picture you got of me there is at uh, Old Trafford. And I remember on the Friday, we had to get the, the, the bus or fly up to um, to Manchester. <laughs> and I had to run out. I, I literally run into my, run out to get, get in my car and avoid all the, the press guys because my hair was just orange. <laughs> And you could hardly see my eyebrow. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'll just bring it up now. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I. I, didn't, I don't remember the orange. I'll be honest. I didn't remember the orange thing until now. It, it like, wasn't oh, yeah, supposed to be orange. Yeah, it was supposed to be blonde. And then we win one nil. That was yeah. it. Yeah, you can hardly see my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, you can't see it. You knew it. I think the, the shout was West Ham were going to be playing a clowning goal on Saturday, and it was just kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> we go and win one nil. Buzz in. Jermaine Defoe from the right the header. Oh yeah, 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 Jermaine. Oh dear, it's always Man United with us. It's always Man United. <laughs> it's Man United and Tottenham. That's the A2 game. It's always Man United, always Tottenham. But yeah. Anyway, James, James O, James E, JMO, whoever you want to be called today. Um, David, it's been lovely. Honestly, thank you. Um, My pleasure. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. Um, whatever you do, subscribe, share, all that type of stuff. Everything that that uh everything that, all that good stuff. Um do a, do a little rustlers. There we go. Comments, like, like, and subscribe. And uh, for myself and from David, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jabs. Come in your irons. And we'll see you again very, very soon. That's it, David. See you later, everyone. Take care.